So 5.1, we're going to talk about nth root and rational exponents. So first, we're going to talk about nth roots. So the nth root, we're used to taking square roots, but we could take the nth root. So it could be any number. So we could take like the cubed root of a number like 10. We could take the cubed root of 10. We could take the fourth root of 10. So this little number out front is the index. When we break down square roots and we circle our pairs, the index tells us how many of a kind we need to circle. So we have different rules depending if our index is an even number or an odd number. So if it's an even index, let's say I was taking the fourth root of a negative number. So the fourth root of negative eight. We can't take an even root of a negative number because this would be imaginary. We've done it before where we had like the square root of four, of negative four, and we know that that would be 2i. So these would be imaginary, so we would say no real solution. <laughs> Bless you. So when our index is even, we can't take <coughs> the even root of a negative. But if it's odd, so I could do something like the cubed root of negative 8. So odd would be okay. Because the cubed root of negative 8 would end up being negative 2. You just can't do it when it's an even index. Because we would break down negative 8 into 4 and 2. 4 gets broken down into 2 and 2. Mm -hmm. The cubed root tells us that we circle 3 of a kind. And then because it's negative on the inside, our answer is negative. Then it's also important to know, it doesn't matter what the index is. Anytime you take the nth root of 0, your answer is 0. So it could be even or odd. Also, one last thing to mention before we get into the examples. We're used to taking square roots, so I could take like the square root of 4. When it's the square root and it doesn't have a number written out here, it's implied that that number is 2. So if our index is 2, it's just like a normal square root. But it's kind of like saying x to the first power, like we don't write the 1 as our exponent. We don't really write the 2 outside on our index. You can do it in your work if it helps you, but you wouldn't write it. It's just implied that that index is a 2 for a normal square root. So let's take a look at example one. So we have to find the indicated real nth roots of a. So the n is our index, so we're taking the third root of negative 216. Can I take the third root of a negative number? Yeah, it's odd. I already have the answer just from looking at that. So because it's an odd root, we can take the cubed root of a negative number, it's just going to tell us that our answer is negative. So we need to figure out what the cubed root of negative 216 is. So we want to start by saying, what are two factors of 216? Well, it's even, so 2 would be a factor. And 2 would go into 216 108 times. So 2 times 108. Now, what are two factors of 108? Two and fifty four, perfect. What are two factors of fifty four? Two and twenty seven. And what are two factors of twenty seven? Nine and three. And two factors of nine? Three and three. So I'm just going to bring all my factors down, just keep them all on the line. Now we're taking the third root of this. So how many of a kind would I circle? Three of a kind. So do I have three of a kind? I have three threes. Anything else? 
three twos. So a two and a three would come to the outside. And what's two times three? Six. six. So our answer would be negative six. Because we knew our answer was going to be negative because our number on the inside was negative from the start. So the next one, we're taking the fourth root of 81. So what are two factors of 81? Nine, nine. nine and nine. And two factors of nine? Three and three. And three and three. I'm circling how many of a kind here? Four, four of a kind. Do I have four of a kind? Yep. So what would come to the outside? Three. So my answer would be three. All right, next page, let's look at number one. So we're taking the fourth root of 16. So what are two factors of 16? Four and four. You could say eight and two. It doesn't matter which factors you start off with. You'll end up with the same. What are two factors of four? Two and two. How many of a kind am I circling? Four of a kind. So I have four twos. So what would my answer be? Two. Uh, it could also be negative two, right? So let's do number three. We have the cubed root of negative 125. Can I take the cubed root of a negative number? Yeah, because my index is odd, so we can do it when the index is an odd number. What does that tell me about my answer? It's going to be negative. So what are two factors of 125? Five and 25. Any number that ends in a five, five is going to be a factor. And what are two factors of 25? Five and five. I'm circling how many of a kind here? Three of a kind. So what would my answer be? Negative five. All right, let's also take a look at number two. So I'm taking the square root of negative 49. Now, since it's just the square root, we don't have to write the index there, but if it helps us to know what we're going to circle, we can write it. So can I take the square root of a negative 49? No, because this is even, so I can't have a negative on the inside. So my answer would be no real solution. Because we would know that the square root of negative 49 is seven I, but the question's asking us what are the real nth roots? So we're only dealing with real numbers here. So if you have an I, it's imaginary, not real. So you can just say no real solution. You don't have to figure anything out. Don't have to simplify. Just, you know, if it's an even index and a negative on the inside, it's no real solution. So the square root with the index could also be written as exponents. So it's important to know that if we had something like the sixth root of 10, this could also be written as 10 to the 1 sixth power. So whatever our index here is, that is the denominator of the fraction. Now we also could have a number in the numerator of our fraction. So let's say I had five to the three fourths power. What would my index here be? Four, because the denominator is your index, so it would be the fourth root of five, and then three is our exponent. So the fourth root of five to the third power. So we still need that exponent there. So it could actually be written like this, or we could write it as the fourth root of five to the third power. So the exponent can go on the inside or the outside. 
And then lastly, if we have a negative exponent, so let's say I had five to the three fourths power, but the, to the negative three fourths power. The negative exponent just moves this into the denominator. So it would be one over five to the three fourths power. which we then could simplify as one over the fourth root of five to the third power. So there's different things that you can do with the exponent and with your radicals. All right, so let's do some examples. We're evaluating the expression. So for A, what is my index? Two. The denominator is our index, so that goes out front. So we're taking the square root of 16 to the third power, or we could write it as the square root of 16 to the third power with the exponent on the outside. Now I'm going to work these out both ways, and you can pick which way you think is easier and I'll explain when to use which way once we work it out. But if we're taking the square root of 16 to the third power, 16 to the third power would be like saying 16 times 16 times 16. Right? We don't actually need to multiply 16 times 16 times 16 because we're factoring it out. So those would be our factors. What are two factors of 16? 4 and 4. So 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. And what are two factors of four? Two and two. So I'm circling how many of a kind here? Two of a kind. So I have two twos, two twos, two twos. How many twos, how many groups of twos do I have? Six. So this is like saying two to the sixth power. So we'd have to actually multiply out two times two times two times two times two times two. So two times two times two would be eight and two times two times two would be eight and eight times eight, 64. You could have stopped with the fours and then just circled your groups of two. And then it would be four to the third power. That would have worked too. Let's look at the second one now. So first we're going to do the square root of 16 and then cube it. So what's the square root of 16? Four. four. And what's four to the third power? Four times four times four? 64. 4 to the third power. 4 times 4 times 4. 64. Which is the same thing. So this way is a lot less work, especially when you know what the inside part is. If you can simplify this to a whole number, I would say this way is the way to go. Just cube it at the end. It's going to be a lot less work. So if you can simplify the inside part, just cube it at the end. So we're going to do them this way for now. All right, let's look at the next one. So I have a negative exponent here. What does a negative exponent do? It makes it 1 over 32 to the 3 fifths power. So my answer is just going to be 1 over whatever 32 to the 3 fifths power is. So let's simplify that. What's my index? 5 is my index. So that's a little number out front. So I have the fifth root of 32 to the third power. And it's going to be 1 over that, yeah. So what are two factors of 32? 32. Eight and four. 
What are two factors of 8? 4 and 2. So I have 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. How many of a kind am I circling here? 5 of a kind. Do I have 5 of a kind? Yes. So what would come to the outside? 2. But what do I have to do to that 2? Cube it. It's got to be 2 to the third power. I cannot forget about the third power here. So 2 to the third power is like saying 2 times 2 times 2. So what would that be? 8. So our answer is 1 over 8. So don't forget, if it's negative, that means it's going to be 1 over whatever number you get when you simplify. All right, let's look at the next one. What's my index for number 5? 2. So I'm taking the square root of 4 to the fifth power. Well, what's the square root of 4? 2. So this would be 2 to the 5th power. If we don't know what 2 to the 5th power is right off the top of our head, write it down. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 would be 4. 2 times 4. 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 times 2 is? 32. So our answer here is 32. All right, let's look at number 6. What does the negative exponent do? Puts it 1 over 9 to the 1 half power. So what's my index here? 2. So this would be 1 over the square root of 9. And what's the square root of 9? 3. So 1 over 3. So look at 7. What's my index? 4. So the fourth root of 81 cubed. So the fourth root of 81, we got to break down 81. What are two factors of 81? 9 and 9. And two factors of 9? 3 and 3. How many of a kind do I need a circle? 4. So what comes to the outside? 3. But it is 3 to the third power. What is 3 to the third power? 27. Awesome. You can just break it down. 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 would be 27. What do you think 1 to the 7 eighths power is? 1. Why? 1 to any power. It could be 1 to the 1 millionth power is always going to be 1. So 1 to the 7th eighths power is 1. Same thing with 0. If I had 0 to the 3 fourths power, this is always going to be 0. So for these types of questions, you don't need to show any work. You know that 0 to whatever power is going to be 0, and 1 to whatever power is going to be 1. All right, let's look at example 4. So example 4, we are solving equations using our nth roots. So in order to solve, we need to get the... Whatever has the exponent all by itself first. So I need to get that x to the fifth power all by itself. So how could I get rid of that 4? Divide both sides by 4. Since 4 is being multiplied to the x to the fifth power, I divide it to move it to the other side. So x to the fifth power is equal to 128 divided by 4. 32. Now we need to get rid of that fifth power there. We need it to be x all by itself. x equals. So to get rid of the fifth power, we can take the fifth root of both sides because it'll cancel out with the exponent. So I'm taking the fifth root of 32. So now I need to figure out what the fifth root of 32 is. So we can break it down. We've done this so many times already today. What are two factors of 32? 8 and 4. 8 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 2, and 4 would be 2 and 2. I'm circling groups of how many? 5. And how many 2s do I have? 5. So what would x be equal to? 2. Awesome. Again, you guys will start to do these again and again. You'll see that the same number starts to pop up. Same numbers go together. So it'll get easier the more you practice. The more you'll be able to do it in your head. So let's look at B. So is my exponent all by itself already? 
Yep, so it's all by itself. So how can I get rid of the fourth power? I gotta take the fourth root. So whatever your exponent is, that's what your index is gonna be. So I'm taking the fourth root. Now we have a little bit of an issue when it's an even exponent. So when the exponent is even, Whenever we take the fourth root of both sides, or if it was the square root or the sixth root, if it's an even exponent, we need plus or minus in our answer. So it cancels out with the fourth power on the left side, but I still have that x minus 3, and it's going to be equal to plus or minus the fourth root of 21. So anytime your index is an even number, exponent or index, it's even, you need the plus or minus. Now let's see, can I take the fourth root of 21? Can I simplify this? What are two factors of 21? Seven, Seven and three. Can I break it down anymore? Do I have a group of four? No, so I can't simplify. So I just leave it as the fourth root of 21. What's the last step I need to do to get x all by itself? Add three to both sides. Can I add the three with the fourth root of 21? No, they're not like terms, so I would just leave it as 3 plus or minus the fourth root of 21. So that would be our answer. So let's look at 13. What do I have to do first for 13? Divide by 8. So x to the third power is equal to, what is 64 divided by 8? 8. Now how do I get rid of that exponent? I take the cube's root, perfect. Do I need a plus or minus when it's the cubed root? No, because it's odd. And let's see if we can break down the cubed root of 8. What are two factors of 8? 4 and 2, and two factors of 4? 2 and 2. I circle how many of a kind here? 3. So what's the cubed root of 8? 2. Perfect. So x is equal to 2. All right, let's look at 15. What should I do first for 15? I got to take the fourth root because that five is inside the parentheses. So I can't go inside until I get rid of that exponent. So I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides because it'll cancel out on the left. So I have X plus five is equal to the fourth root of 16. I need plus or minus because my index is even. Even means that we need plus or minus. So plus or minus the fourth root of 16. Now let's see if we can find the fourth root of 16. What are two factors of 16? 4 and 4 and two factors of 4. I'm circling how many of a kind? 4. So what's the fourth root of 16? 2. So this would be plus or minus 2. So x plus 5 is equal to plus or minus 2. Now what would I have to do next? Subtract 5. Can I combine the 2 with the 5? Yeah, they're like terms. But it's a positive 2 and a negative 2, so we just have to do it separately. So if you want to, split it up into two different equations. x plus 5 is equal to positive 2, and x plus 5 is equal to negative 2. Subtract 5 on both sides, because that's what it was here. And then we subtract 5. I just kind of went back a step to rewrite it. So what is x equal? Negative 3 and negative 7. So these would be our two answers. If you plugged in negative 3 into the equation, it'll work out. If you plug in negative 7 into the equation, it'll work out. So these are our two answers.